Here's seven tips to worship when you don't feel like it. What is up, guys? So good to see you again today. Uh, thanks for joining me here on Foremost Worship. My, my name's Jeff. Uh, excited to talk with you a topic that I think is relevant to all of us. Let's let's be honest. We know we should worship, but we don't always feel like it. You know, Jeremiah 17 tells us that uh, the heart is deceitful above all things. A lot of times, what we feel in our hearts aren't true. Feelings are a liar. I love the quote that says, "Feelings are much like waves. Uh, you can't." keep them from coming, but you get to choose which one you ride on. I think that's just so true for us as believers. We uh, may not always feel like it, but anything that's worth it, anything that's good for you, you have to press through your feelings of not wanting to. So to get really practical, I've just chosen seven tips to help you worship when you don't feel like it. So let's just jump right into it. Number one, mind your surroundings. You know, in the business world, there's a lot of focus around the workspace because I think there's an understanding they have seen scientifically it's it's proven that if your workspace is messy you don't want to spend time in it you don't want to work and frankly you're not as productive I think there's an element to this that applies to our spiritual life if you don't have a specific place you are less likely to spend time with the Lord so I encourage you Mind your surroundings. Think about your surroundings. If your house doesn't have a specific place for you to get away with the Lord, a kind of a secret place, you are going to be less likely to spend time in it. So tip number one is simply this. Maybe you need to designate a space in your home or away from your home, whatever it is. Figure out what is your space? Where is a place that you can go? Uh, that helps you connect with the Lord. Number two, just schedule it. You know, there's an axiom that says that if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. If we aren't purposeful to get it into our schedule on the calendar, uh, it's, it's not very likely to happen. Practically, if you don't make the effort to just schedule it, the urgent will take over. Oftentimes, the important gets pushed out by the urge. And I just encourage you, if, if the Lord's stirring this in your heart, in your mind, just schedule it. Schedule it as if you're setting a date for a friend, uh, that you're gonna go to lunch with them, that you're gonna meet with them in the morning and study the word or whatever it is, or you're just gonna get coffee with this person because you love them, because you enjoy spending time with them. Uh, that's kind of the same for us in our spiritual life. And it's in that time that the Lord will speak to you and you can speak to him. So just schedule it. Number three, know what stirs your affections. This is incredibly powerful for you to know yourself well enough to know what is it that connects you best with the Lord. What is it that stirs your heart towards him? Maybe it's taking communion. Maybe it's uh, just listening to worship music, getting out into nature, Uh, I personally love, I have a pier out by the creek behind our house. I love to just sit there because it's still, it's peaceful. And there's something about water for me that just mm, helps me connect with him. It, It stirs my affections for him, mainly because it puts me in a place where I can connect with him. So know what it is that stirs your affections for him. Number four, identify what robs your affections. What are the things that kind of numb you uh, to connecting with him and and, and uh, your heart being sensitive to him? You need to learn to guard yourself against them or just completely eliminate them from your life. Maybe it's a certain person. Maybe it's a group of people that tend to rob you of your affection for him. Or when, when worry or fear um, begins to well up in your spirit, you can almost guarantee you that's that's beginning to rob your affection for him. Because worry and fear has to do with anxiety, and it's really uh, trusting more in yourself or the things around you than keeping your eyes fixed on the Lord. Sometimes it's just simple activities like, uh, you know, kind of Netflix and chill. It's when you sit down and you're just kind of numbing out. It's when you are zoning, and oftentimes that will 
kind of begin to harden your heart enough to rob you of your affection to connect with the Lord. Number five, stop comfort leeches. Comfort leeches are more things that you turn to for comfort instead of the Lord. In John 14, 16, Jesus said that he was praying to the Father that he would send him a, a, a counselor or a comforter and that he would abide with us forever. You see, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. If we're believers in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And one of the primary roles that the Holy Spirit plays in us is to be our comforter. But I guarantee you, if you look at your life, there are things that you will tend to seek comfort in rather than Him. Some of these may overlap with the other. I know plenty of people who will look to uh, Netflix or entertainment as a way out, as a, as a, as a kind of a, a numbing or a comfort of sorts. But it's identifying the, the things that you tend to um, seek satisfaction from or seek that comfort from. And it's in knowing those things and turning away from them that you can put your focus back on the Lord and be entirely focused and entirely um, clinging to Him alone. So to put it simply, it's when we soothe our pain um, with things of this world that it pushes the Lord away or it, it uh, will sap the desire to be with Him and the feelings, the desire to spend time with the Lord will not be there because you are getting your comfort. You are trying to fill that void with something of this world and it will never satisfy. So if you can know and understand what are the things, the comfort leeches that you are turning to or are allowing to attach to yourself, if you can knock those off, your desire for intimacy with the Lord will increase because you will find yourself turning to Him instead of being soothed or, or seeking faux satisfaction from other things. Number six, remind yourself. Anything that requires endurance in your life will require a certain mental strength to, to overcome that hardship that's right in front of you. A runner has to look past the, the length that they have to go still, or the, the pain that they're feeling in their legs or their side, and he or she has to look past those things to see why they're doing this in the first place. Because the mind and the body will so often cut you short from what you're capable of. And without a doubt, our relationship with the Lord is very much a marathon versus a sprint. First love is about developing a history with the Lord. And from that history, you develop a skill of looking back and reminding yourself. You see this in, in the Psalms all the time. David is constantly saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul. It's like he's telling himself, remember, remember what the Lord's done. Remember the times in the past and let it spur you on to being with him again. Let it spur you on to trusting him once again. Because that's exactly what it is. When you remind yourself, when you mentally, when you love the Lord with your mind, it takes you back to first love. And number seven, feed your soul. Luke 6, 45 says, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. It is when we abide with the Lord and we, and we put our roots deep down that we will find the nutrients that will spring out of our lives. The more healthy and full your heart is, the more you will naturally do what you were created to do. And you were made to worship. You were made for connection with the Lord. So just maybe, if you don't feel like worshiping, maybe your heart's just not full and it's starving for some nutrients. You know, Jesus said that He is the bread of life. So some of that's just spending time with Him. Or maybe it's the understanding that, that the Word uh, is food for our hearts. And there's also this understanding that your heart needs rest. If you are running ragged, you will not feel like worshiping. You need rest, and He is the ultimate rest. A lot of these things don't really feel exciting. But I guarantee you, if you feed your heart, if, if you begin to put those nutrients into that tree, it will spill out. Out of the overflow of the heart comes your worship. So there you have it, seven tips to worship 
when you don't feel like it. I hope this is encouraging to you. I just encourage you, share, uh, subscribe, pass this along. I have lots more content like this that I hope encourages you, inspires you to love Jesus first and foremost in your life and ministry. So please like, subscribe. It really helps me out. It helps me to know what is working, what you like, and it also helps get this message out more. You can also find out more at foremostworship.com and most other social media platforms. So go try these out and I'll see you next time.